Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. She is a famous entrepreneur and she has amazing things she's going to talk to you about today. Her name is Leslie Foran Forenza. Foran Say it right. There we go. <laughs> It's That's one okay, of those tongue-tied last names. You know what I mean. I do. I do. <laughs> so Leslie is here today, and she has some great uh, advice about people who want to get out in the open and excel their careers. So Leslie, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Thanks, Stacey. So I help entrepreneurs, mostly new coaches and entrepreneurs who struggle with public speaking because they're terrified of it. Mm -hmm. And we know that people can't be the best kept secret in town and expect to grow their business. Right. So I want to help them get over that hurdle so that they're willing to put themselves out there, whether that's in-person speaking events or creating video content for social media platforms, you, uh, their website and showing up at networking events. That's another uh, serious problem people have is they don't like to network. And I don't understand that because I'd rather network than cold call any day of the week. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I, I found myself that you, when, when you actually network with people, it's a totally different feel than when you cold call people. When you cold call people, you can't really get in, uh, intimate with the person. They can't, can't really get a feel for you. And when you're talking to someone, you kind of pick up off their energy. You have their vibe. You can feel their passion. And it's amazing the the connections you can make because you make one good connection and you do you do really well with that person. And there comes a referral. There comes another referral. And so, you know, getting over the hump, you know, I think that's what it is. is a lot of people People are just scared. Do you think it's mostly, is it the fear of being rejected? Do you think that's one of the reasons? I do think it's one of the reasons. There's only two fears that we are born with, and that is the fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. Mm -hmm. Everything else we've learned along the way. So this whole idea of, and it is about rejection. It is about uh, maybe for some people not being worthy or not feeling like they bring enough value to the table. I want to share Every single one of us on this planet is here for a reason and we all have value. Yes. So we need to stop telling ourselves that story. Yes, I agree with you. You know, everyone has a story. Everyone has the ability to help another person. Uh, you know, you, you, all you have to do is tell a story. You don't have to relate to that person 100%, but there could be one little thing in that story that could change another person's life. It's just being able to actually verbalize and get that story out. And, you know, when you work with clients, you know, what are the first things you do to help clients? Because there's so many people out there that want to actually excel. I've worked with so many people that, you know, that they want to excel, but they, they are afraid of getting out there. They want it. They think it's going to come to them and then, you know, or they hope it's going to come to them. And just, that's not just the way the world operates in today's oh. business world. No, it's not. You have to be willing to put yourself out there and share your message in a really impactful way. So it connects with your ideal client mm -hmm. and the people that are right for you. So some people call it your tribe. I don't care what you call it, but we don't resonate with everyone. And that's okay. Yeah. I mean, we can't serve the 8 million people that are on that planet as an individual, right? We just can't. It's impossible. So yeah. we really want to narrow our focus. But you asked me, what's the first thing we do? Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that that story that's false that we tell ourselves. Yeah. So what I help my clients do is to take that inner critic, because we all have that little internal voice mm -hmm. that's not so nice. Right. It's doing a job to keep us safe. Yes. But we have to work with it to help us be our inner champion. Yeah. So uh, my inner champion looks like Wonder Woman, the Linda Carter Wonder Woman from the 70s or 80s. Mm -hmm. I don't know when she was on TV. But I remember her. I liked her. <laughs> yeah, me too. So, but that's because my inner critic is kind of this little girl in a little pink dress with pigtails. Now, I never had pigtails in my life, but mm -hmm. she's not very nice. Yeah. <laughs> and so I had to... I've had to retrain her and call on Wonder Woman, if you will, uh, to bring out the best in me. And it is daily ongoing work. 
-hmm. it gets easier over time. The more you do it, it's hard at first. Yeah. That's where we work. I, that's mostly what I work in. I start every session with my clients about hey, some ideas. What have you been doing? How's this working for you? What, are, you know, so I can call on that champion when I need it, because there will be times I've had them lose my place in a presentation. Yep. Something that I was going to say, the point I was going to make just goes right out of my head for whatever reason. Okay. Staying calm and confident and not getting flustered. And fact of the matter is, Stacey, we're all human. Yep. So we're all going to make boo-boos once in a while. Being willing to forgive ourselves. Right. Because others mostly will. Yeah. I mean, people understand that. And they'll, okay, just... Don't belabor the point and move on. Uh, that's perfect advice. I, I really agree with you. Everything you said is so meaningful. I think people, we are the worst critics of our own self. And I think that that so many times that we end up digging a hole in the ground when we could be elevated to the next level, we're actually digging a deeper hole and deeper hole and, and we're not able to actually get out and, and do what we can do, you know, let ourselves prosper, you know, be the best we can be because that inner critic is always worried, you know, always worried about what others think, I think. And I think that's one big th problem too, is that people have to overcome is not worry what others think that they need to think about what, what they have to be satisfied with themselves. You know, I think, you know, I don't know how you feel, but it's like, you know, it, the, I think the main person we have to satisfy is ourselves. What do yes. you think? Yeah, I totally agree with that. And, and that is, we are, are typically our own worst critic, worst enemy, whatever word or phrase you want to turn, but knowing that I am doing the best. I mean, if you literally show up and do your best presentation that you, and then you grow from that, you get feedback, you learn a very impactful book that I read. Oh, probably you're, I didn't read. I listened to it on audible, <laughs> the gap in the game, mm -hmm. Sullivan. And you might know, Dan, he's a pretty famous coach, pretty highly paid coach. And Benjamin Hardy, I think MD was the co-author, but one of the concepts they talked about is so often we are looking at the gap. We're looking at where we're not, what we don't have, where we forget we need to look at the game. So when we say, you know what, I did this little bit and it was successful. Was it perfect? No, we're not going to be, but did I learn from it? Did I grow from it? Did I step into the person I know I can be? Did I share my message? That's what we want to be able to do and not beat ourselves up because we're not where we think we need to be or stop the comparison game. Right. Run your own race. It doesn't right. matter where somebody else is, right? Yes. Oh, I agree. I agree yeah. so much. And what are this, the some of the steps and some of the things you have them to start doing to overcome? Because there's so many people out there that have dreams about being a a speaker, and they you know, and they want to do this and they want to do that, you know, and but they're terrified of, of stepping out into the unknown because they don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of the things you tell them? And you know, we talked about you know looking at at Wonder Woman, and we talked about you know overcoming that little critic. Are there some tools that they they could do at home to practice to kind of strengthen themselves and get themselves to the point where they could say I could do this well recognizing that it, when it comes and creating that alter ego so I joked a little bit about Wonder Woman but you might know this story about Beyonce she has her alter ego is called Sasha Fierce and Sasha comes out when she straps on her stilettos to head out on stage so that's what I recommend people do, whatever you want to call it, whatever that persona is for you, and what's your trigger. So is it turning on the camera if you're creating a video? Is it shortly before you step out on stage if you are in public and, and literally walking out onto a stage? Or if you're simply leading a meeting with your team and you just open the door of the conference room, whatever that trigger is, then this is the envelope. Uh, the persona I put on, the cape I put on, whatever you want to call it. So I step into that. And then once it's over, I can take that off. I'm back to myself. But having that uh, alter ego, if you will, yeah. I think is super helpful. So creating that breathing techniques mm -hmm. are 
very helpful in my opinion. Yeah. We I want to be able to do is practice before we need them. So the boxed breathing, maybe you're familiar with Stacy, mm -hmm. the counting to four inhale uh, on your inhale, mm -hmm. holding your inhale for four. So as you're inhaling, draw, lay, imagining a line, and then as you're holding your inhale, a line going this way, and then you're exhaling for four counts. And then as you're holding your exhale, you're drawing a line across the bottom. So in your head, you've created this visual of a box, but yeah. you're breathing slowly and purposely when we get nervous or anxious or whatever word you want to label it. Yes. When excited, when we get excited, we're typically breathing much more shallowly and we want to be able to remember to breathe deeply and that relaxes us. And so practicing some breath breaths, breath work, mm -hmm. what I recommend, and I do this myself, is I have a pre-presentation routine to get myself calm and centered. So about 420 today, mm -hmm. I went through my little ritual because I knew I was going to get on this call with you right? and have breathing exercises, the persona, uh, talking to myself about this is going to be really great. Yeah. It is going to be a wonderful conversation. We're going to really feed off each other. I'm so excited about this opportunity. And so all of that positive yeah. language, there is such power in language that I don't think we recognize. Yeah. And one of the tips or, or tricks I always tell people is watch what you're saying about the things that you know you do in your daily life. So instead of I should, I have to, I must, Yeah. it's I get to. I choose to, I want to. Right. I mean, how many people roll out of bed this morning in the morning and say, oh, I have to go to work. Yeah. I mean, what if you switched it up and what is that? I choose to, I get to, I mean, I get to go to work because there's a lot of people that don't get to do that. Yes. Exactly. So just that language switch is powerful. Oh, I, I think so. You know, it's our mentality. It's how we, you know, how we switch our mindset, you mindset. know. It's just, uh, it really, it plays a big role on who we are and, and how we react to things. You know, if yes. you go in and, and you're thinking about failing, you're going to fail. If yeah. you go in and you think about succeeding, you will succeed. Yes. You know, and it's because you, you put that, those thoughts in yourself and you don't even realize, but your body's exemplifying them at the same time it does. and people pick up on those energies. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, you mentioned um, that that idea of success or failure. So looking at what, if if maybe it didn't go as well as I thought it would, mm -hmm. I can still learn from activity. So again, it's that reframe about what can I learn from that opportunity? What did I gain from it? As opposed to, oh, it was awful. It was, you know, be, again, we have to retrain that little voice to be our helper yes. instead of our hindrance. Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, when you're getting people ready to to move out and to and to start things that they they just started, and you get them and and you is there a is there a method that you get them to start communicating with people? Because I've worked with introverts and gotten them out of that inner at that introvert you know behavior. You know, yeah. what are some things you know for people who are shy? They're introverted, you know, and you know people don't realize that the biggest rock stars, the biggest frontline singers, most of them are shy you know, but they'll go on stage and they'll sing in front of a million people, but you talk to them in, in an interview or you'll read their interview and they're, they're, they say, I'm a very shy person. Mm -hmm. So how does that person come out from the shy or introverted, you know, and, and get into that rock star mode, you know, what are some things that you suggest for these people? So start small and start where you are with what you have. I was interviewed not too long ago on another podcast. And the woman was saying, you know, she said, I just started my podcast because I had a microphone and I had access to zoom and I started where I was and she's grown it into a terrific, um, like you have grown yours. So that's what I would say to people is just begin and ask for in, uh, input from family and friends, uh, co-workers, associates, people you trust, right? people that are going to be honest with you, not be degrading or mean, but yeah. give you some good feedback. I also share with people, if you can find a mentor, somebody that you can ask 
information, somebody who's where you want to be. So right. you, can, uh, you can't necessarily copy people, but mm -hmm. you can find out what worked for them and see if it's going to work for you. Try things out. It's all experiments Yes. or work with a coach, work with their many coaches that do what I do. People who are willing to help. I think a coach is super helpful, especially when we're starting because yeah. there's so much and there's so many directions that we could go. Oh, the yeah. more you can be specific, the, the analogy I like to use with people is it's a lot like the difference between a light bulb, mm -hmm. an LED bulb, for example, and a laser beam. Yeah. Both let off light, but the power when you focus that laser beam. So when I can focus, what's my one message? What is the one message that I want to share? And when I nail that, mm -hmm. then I can expand. Yes. But there's so many opportunities that people have and more information that they can share than one message. Oh, what do I do? Pick one and go with it. Yeah. See if it works. Try it out. And exactly. little by little, it's little steps. I think that sometimes we hear about people who are seemingly overnight successes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the story that I keep that comes to always, my mind always about that is um, Justin Bieber and how he became so like almost overnight famous with on social media and that kind of thing. That's pretty rare. Yes. Most of us are out there working day by day, little by little, growing our contacts, growing our audience. I mean, Stacey, mm -hmm. I know you started somewhere and you have a huge following now, but I'm going to guess it didn't happen overnight. No, about 25 years worth of working. <laughs> okay, that's what I, 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 I I've heard other people, uh, somebody once said, yeah, I, I, it's a 25 year overnight success story. Like, yeah. <laughs> So we have to be realistic. I guess that I said that because I want to encourage people to be realistic about expectations and know you've got to put in the work, right? You've got to put in the reps. You can't expect to run a marathon because you ran around the block today. Right. Marathon, exactly. you've got to build up. It takes endurance. Anything worthwhile takes endurance and practice. And I got to say, that's one of the biggest things that... I come across with people and I have to have discussions with people is because they, they think they did a few things. They think success is supposed to be knocking at their door, but it, it's a process, you know, and you should give yourself rewards. I think give yourself a pat on the back. Every oh, time yeah. you get a little bit higher, you know, you're going to know when you did something really good and, and out of your realm and, you know, you, 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 you know, really got it you know, give yourself a, a pat on the back, but you're, you're not going to be able to get from A to M and then from M to Z, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna take time, you know, they, like you said, there's a very small percentage of those overnight successes, maybe like a 0 0.005, you know, yeah. you know, and everybody else, you know, you have to work hard and, and people want success. And I think that, you know, for some reason, as, as time goes on, people's retention span gets, you know, less and less and less, and people want things right away, but it just, it doesn't happen like that, especially in the, in the speaking world and the business world and, and, and trying to be a successful entrepreneur, mm -hmm. I feel like it, it's, it's a stepping stone it, and, and it's fail and success, fail and success. And you find out what works and you find out what doesn't work and you find out what's for you. And you'll know, I think when the right thing comes along, what do you think? Oh, absolutely. I think when you, I, you know, do what you love, love what you're, I don't remember the exact saying, but there's a lot of truth in that. But sometimes it takes a while to find that. Yeah. Now, some people know inherently, and I think we all have intuition that we can tap into us. Some it's louder in some people than it is in others, yeah. but find out what really resonates with you. I just was talking to a woman uh, that's going to actually, she's going to help me do my webinar. She's going to do the back end um, next week because it's hard to do two things at once, oh, yeah. right? You need somebody to do the technology. Yeah. And she, she just was saying she has just recently discovered that is her thing. And she's super excited about it. Like, great, because I need somebody that can help me with that. So right. yeah, it's important that we discover that, but it is again, somewhat trial and error, getting some feedback from people who is your role model, who's done what you want to do, what did they follow? What was their recipe? Yes. Success leaves clues. Yes. So finding out 
what people did. And it isn't, we have to be realistic in our expectations. I know I'm being repetitive, but I think that's a key point is we've got to do the work. We've got to be focused and we've got to be in an evaluation. So it's always about what worked best. What did I do? What, what did I learn and how can I make one more improvement? What can I do different next time that would up level my game? Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I, you know, you mentioned earlier that you think everyone should have a co- I, a coach, I think is so important. I think you do. Everybody does need a coach. I know I haven't met one successful person that doesn't have a coach. Some people have two or three or four coaches, you know, and it, it's okay to have a coach. I think it's great because each coach has their own expertise and they kind of keep you in line. They find out exactly what you're looking for. And they know what's going to work or they know they get to know your personality and they they know, you know, have a good idea of what roads to lead you down. Or if you have a road, they they kind of see they can help you with that pathway because yeah. it's very hard. I think, you know, when trying to do you can't do everything. And that's what I see a lot of people doing. A lot of people are trying to do everything themselves and it's it's very hard to run a successful business if you're going to try to do, wear all the hats, I think. Well, and work in your zone of genius. Mm-hmm. It's so for me, it is not the minutia. Yeah. <laughs> Those details that is not my strong. That's why the technology piece, having somebody help me with, with that is so key. Yeah. I know you talked about a coaching for a variety of things. I remember reading I, Harvey McKay. I read a couple of his books, but I think it was how to swim with the sharks without getting eaten alive. Yeah. Where he talks about, he played table tennis, learned and had a coach for that. And he had a coach for this. And he had like six or seven different coaches with yeah. different expertise because he wanted to learn those from those people to help him get better because that's what it is. I I, I believe a coach draws out from you yes. to help you be your best. It does. They do. Yes, for sure. I think it's very important to have coaches. And I, I think it's, and they also, they, they, sometimes they th- see the bigger picture, you know, and sometimes we can only see what's in front of us and, yes. you know, they're able to gear us to, to get to our goals. And sometimes people have a different view, you know, we might only see it this way and they, you know, they have a different viewpoint or like, you know, if they've worked for bigger companies or if they've done bigger things, then they mm-hmm. have an idea of what really works and what doesn't work, you know, yeah. because you could read a lot of things on the internet and it could get you very confused and not all that information is really accurate either. Yeah. Well, everyone has an opinion. Everyone has something that worked, uh, what worked for them, yeah. but I encourage you to find the person that is right for you because I'm not going to be a right fit for everybody. Right. And I don't think it makes sense to work with someone that you are going to be um, chafing against. But I do think a coach that is willing to challenge you, ask you the hard questions. The coach is not your friend. Mm -hmm. That's not the idea. It's about somebody to help build you up and encourage you, but also ask you the tough questions and get you to do the work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think one of the biggest things that I wanted to tap into that we talked about a little bit earlier is the fear, you know, Mm -hmm. what holds people back of becoming a successful entrepreneur or, or getting in front of, of, uh, on stage or doing a webinar in front of people is the fear. And, you know, are there some tactics that you teach people or some strategies to help people get over the fear? Because facing fear is, is something that so many people, you know, struggle with and, you know, and it affects their personal lives too. But how, how do you, what, what things do you suggest? Well, nobody's died that I know of from speaking in public. So you have to say, say, okay, I'm not going to, it's not going to kill me literally, but yes, I might be scared. And yes, my um, heart rate might be elevated for that's why if I can focus on my breathing, breathing, a breathing technique, having that in place can help me relax. It's about reframing. So yes, excitement and anxiety feel the same in your body. Yes. So your heart rate's a little jacked up. Think about when you, if you like roller coasters, mm-hmm. not everybody does, but that same kind of idea, that thrill 
of riding that coaster. Okay. The thrill of standing in front of an audience, same physiological reactions. It's about how you talk to yourself about them. Exactly. So that's what it, it's the reframe. So yeah. I've taught, and again, language is important. What am I saying to myself? Okay, this is an opportunity for me. I might be frightened, but I, I don't want to use the word terrified. How can I change that up? What can I say differently to myself? Mm -hmm. So I really challenge people to, what are you saying? What's your language and how can we reframe it? Right. Because that's that to me is a very useful tool and no mm -hmm. our patterns our neural pathways have been dug very deep yes so if i've been afraid for a very long time i need to rewire my brain it's possible our brain is a plastic neuroplasticity of the brain and so i can make new connections yes. but it's not going to happen overnight so I have to practice again. Someone gave me this analogy once and I I thought it was brilliant. You can still see in some places out in the Western United States where the wagons went west to Oregon, the Oregon Trail. Yes. You can still see some of those ruts in the dirt. Now that was over a hundred years ago. Yeah. Your connection, neural connections are very similar. If you've done something for a really long time, if you've told yourself your entire life, you are terrified to get in front of people, guess what? It's going to take a minute or two or three or four years <laughs> to <laughs> rewire those neural connections. It is yeah. possible though. Oh yeah. It's definitely possible. It's just, it's, it's believing in yourself. Yes. You know? it is. And, it, and So yeah. having people that will encourage you I mean, that's sometimes the, the people that we surround ourselves aren't always our best encouragers. So find those. Build yourself a community of people who are interested in doing the same thing. I One of the things I always recommend for people, especially if they are just beginning their speaking journey and want a place to practice is Toastmasters. Yes. It's a wonderful, supportive community of like-minded people that are all there for the same reason. And they will give you valuable feedback. Mm -hmm. They will help you get rid of your extra language, yes. the ums and ahs, or any other words, any other filler words. Right. My dad cured me of saying, you know, when I was a teenager. Yes, it was a, I ended that on every sentence with, you know. Yeah. You need to say no. I don't know. <laughs> After a while, it got annoying. I stopped. <laughs> You're right. Those are, those are actually big things for many speakers, you know, um, you know, because you're right in the middle of a thought and you're trying to get the next thought. So you're, you automatically do it and then it becomes a habit. And it's like, it's really being conscious of when you speak, but you can break it if you keep practicing, you know, and that's what I, I, I think people have to realize as speakers, you know, you have to always practice and practice and practice. And just because you're a speaker and just because you gain the confidence and now you're going out and you're speaking in front of people, you still have to practice and know your material. The more you know your material, the less you're going to say those ums. Yeah, you know, you know, because you're, then you're going to see, I just said, you know, then you're going <laughs> to <laughs> you're going to be able to just like know the material and just flow through it. And helping people understand pauses are really effective. Yes. But there's nothing wrong with a pause in the conversation or a pause in your presentation. You don't need to fill. Now, I think radio is the exception, right? The radio announcers don't like dead air. Yeah. Otherwise, pausing, using to learn it is an effective tool. Right. It's a very effective tool. And I think anybody is capable if they just gain the confidence and they believe in what they're doing. If you really want something, be positive, you know, really focus on what you need to do and practice. And what are, are, are some of the other tools that you suggest as well? Well, one thing I always encourage people to think about when they are presenting, no matter if they're city, seated or standing, is keep your feet flat on the floor. And when you move, move with purpose. So what, as I'm right now, as I'm seated and talking to you, I've 
my feet are, I'm not crossing my legs. I'm not even crossing my feet at my ankles. They're anchored to the floor because I think we can draw energy up and through us when we are anchored. Grounded. Similarly, when we're standing on stage or in leading a meeting and we're standing or behind a podium, I want to move to make a point and lean in at times and then right. lean back. But please avoid pacing back and forth across the state. Now, I've seen a lot of TED Talk speakers do this and more power to them. But I believe people are much more powerful when they step in and move and then step back and they're not running back and forth across the stage. My opinion, you can disagree, whatever. <laughs> no, I like that because when you're moving forward, I think it's, it seems more powerful. And when you're moving back and forth, I think you're contemplating or nervous. And that's the impression I get when I see people going back and forth, back and forth. But when I see someone step forward, that reminds me of someone with confidence and they, they have belief in themselves and they have self-worth. And then I'm more likely to take them seriously because I'm, you know, their body, I think body language is really important. And I don't think people realize that, but your body language, the way you stand, the way you move your hands, the way you, you know, show yourself, even the, the colors you wear and the way you dress plays a big impact because first impression is always your last impression. You know, that's how, what I was taught. And I it always stuck with me because I believe it, you know, people get their first, you know, human beings are very judgmental, you know, beings. Yeah. And the first, you know, impression you get of someone, it, it sticks with you. So you really have to make that first impression, especially when you get on stage, I think a good one. What do you think? I agree. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. So I think it's really important. That's why practice is so key, knowing your material cold. Now, you're not going to get up and talk like a robot. At least I hope you're not. <laughs> right? And you're going to have some um, uh, vocal variety, is the right. word I was looking for, mm -hmm. and emphasize certain points being a little bit louder, maybe a little softer. It all depends on what you're wanting to convey to your audience. But you mentioned body language. The question I often get with from people is what do I do with my hands and my arms? And it feels so uncomfortable if I'm standing, if I'm just holding them, just let them fall naturally to your side. Yeah. You could, sometimes people, I've seen them steeple their fingers, but be very aware of ho avoid holding anything. Don't yeah. click a pen. Don't play with a rubber band. Don't shuffle your note cards. Yeah. Be aware of what you're doing with your hands. And again, I think that's where practice comes in. Yeah. So it feels pretty natural. I'm Greek. So my hands are always all over the place, but I think for a lot of people, I think, um, how would you suggest they practice? Is there a specific way that you feel is most effective when people practice? The most effective way is to say the words out loud. Oftentimes people say them in their heads. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. So you could call up Zoom and just talk into the camera if you want, if you're doing a virtual presentation or record yourself on your phone or practice in front of your mirror. Mm -hmm. You could go to the extent if you're going to be in person, if you have small children and they have dolls or stuffed animals, set them up around your living room and practice. So you're making eye contact. What I tell people is you don't have to look people in the eye. They're not going to know from stage, but look around the room and pick out a friendly face on each side. So somebody on the right, somebody on the left, and somebody in the middle that you can talk to. So if you're on stage, you're going to naturally look, and you're not necessarily going to do that on camera because I've just lost eye contact and I want to do that. But when right. you're in person, that can be helpful. And remember, your audience wants you to succeed. Right. Yes, there are the occasional mean folks out there and they're going to give you some nasty looks or scowly faces. Most people are there because they want to hear the message you are sharing. Yes. So they want you to succeed. They want to hear what you have to say. They're willing to listen. So go with that, engage right. with that and know 
you have a powerful message to share. That's why you're in business. Right. Exactly. I think also, like I know for me, I used to, when I used to go in front of the audience, you know, anytime I would go in front of the audience, I would make believe that they were my friends. And I would say to myself in my head, if these were my friends, how would I act and how would I present myself? And that would take away my nervousness. But I always, no matter what, even to this day, you know, right before I get on stage, I'll always get those those couple second butterflies. And then once I get on the stage and start talking, they disappear, but they're always there. And then I just look at the audience and I'm like, I, these are my friends. And I just, in and I just let go and just go for it. Yeah. Well, I think you make a very important point, Stacey. Every seasoned speaker that I've ever spoken to has had that little sensation right before they step out on stage, know it. And that's okay. That's right. helpful. Uh, it g- gives you energy and makes you know that you're there for a purpose and a reason. Right. If it was, oh, oh this is boring. Well, how would you come across, right? Boring. Nobody <laughs> wants to listen to that. Exactly. Exactly. I think it's really important that people, you know, maybe even make an outline, you know, and organize their thoughts and cue cards, whatever, whatever works for them. And then just keep practicing and practicing. And even on, um, if you go on PowerPoint, now you could record your voice and you can go through your PowerPoint presentation and then you could listen to yourself after, and then you could re-record over it and listen to yourself and see how you sound, you know, and that's in another way that when you were going through the different methods that came into my head also. Yes. And many people don't like the sound of their own voice. You'll get used to it. I know at first I was like, Ugh, but you'll get used to it and know that it will help you improve. One of the things that I learned as I was creating video content for social media and having it transcribed, how often I was saying so at the beginning of making transitions or making points. Right. I, oh, I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very common. Now you are writing a book. You're almost in the process. You wrote the book. It's in the process of getting published right now. It should be out soon, but tell me a little about the book. Well, it is designed to help people get over their fear of public speaking. So the title is a uh, find your voice, conquer your fears and share your story with confidence. And it goes through some of the things we've talked about today a little bit deeper, but gives people a formula to follow if they want it to get over their fear, get out there, share their message in a, in a powerful way. And I help them. It talks about all three things, in-person speaking, video content, and networking, because I believe those are three keys to growing a business, especially in this day and age. Now, yeah. If we had been talking 10 years ago, video was not what it is today. And yeah, you know, maybe, and the other thing is, it's so much more convenient. All mm-hmm. you need is some kind of mobile device right. and that you can create content with ease. Exactly, exactly. Now, where can people find the book when it's published? Where will be places they can find the book? It will be on Amazon when it's published. And it will be on my website as well. So either place. And where's your, what's your website address? So my Leslie Fiorenzo dot coach. And also when you, they go onto your website, do you, uh, what other services do you provide? So uh, they could download my fearless speaking blueprint. Mm-hmm. If they were inclined to do that, uh, they could book a 30 minute consult with me if they're really struggling to get over the hump or they have a question or two i'm happy to do that no charge no obligation i'd love to have a conversation with anybody that wants to book a call and they can find some other um, ideas there i've got some testimonials from people i've worked with if that's important to people oh that's wonderful and my social media links are there too oh excellent excellent 
Wow, this has been great. You know, I I really enjoyed having you on the show. You you really provided a whirlwind of, of great information. You know, I think so many people, you know, want to be speakers. You know, when I took a course and I had I wanted to tweak up my speaking skills, it was so funny because the classes were there were so many people out there that wanted to become speakers. Some of them were already speakers and they just wanted to improve. Some of them wanted to change careers and make it a full time career. Some of them just want to do it as a side job and and they just want you know they love speaking in front of people and helping people everyone was there for their own reason but it was funny because you know when I was there it was all different age groups so you like we were talking about before you know at any time you know don't let your age you know stop you from from living your dream if you have a dream and you want to speak in front of people and you always want to do that in the back of your head don't worry about how old you are you know, go for it, do it. Because, you know, when I went there, you know, when, when I was brushing up on my speaking skills and I was thinking about going and maybe doing it as a full-time career, I, you know, I was like, well, maybe I'm too old to be doing it as a full-time career. And I got there and everyone was my age and older. And it was so funny because it was just like, you know, well, that's out of the hat, you know, I'm, I'm not too old, you know, <laughs> You know, you, I, could have, you should, you know, follow your dreams and, and no matter absolutely. what age you are, you know, you could be a success and yeah. success is what you determine the word success to be. It is. It is. I believe it was E.E. E. Cummings that said you're, it's never too late to be what you might have been. Right. It would encourage people start where you are. The only impossible journey is the one that you never begin. So start where you are, take steps, make a plan, take action. Right. We've got to take action. Right. And th those are excellent advices. And if there's anything else that you'd like to share, maybe any other from everything that we talked about, if is there any other um, things that you want the listeners to learn? Any any turning points or anything you'd like to emphasize on? Well, like what you just said, I think that you're. It's never too late to and begin where you are. But know that if you have a seed of an idea. I believe it was there for a reason, and I would encourage you to act on it. Don't go to your grave with your music still in you or your presentation still in you, if you want to look at it that way. Right. Uh, we want to live a life of regrets. We want to act and make things happen for us, no matter where we are. Yes. Oh, for sure. Definitely. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Leslie, well, for being thank on the you. show. I really enjoyed having you on and I'm so glad you came on to give people such valuable information because, you know, there's so many people out there that have dreams, but they let their fear and they let the fear of change or it just the fear in general stop them or just like that little inner critic or mm -hmm. am I too old or this or that, you know, you know, don't stop, stop thinking and start doing, you know. And exactly. so said to me, you know, we were talking and just like Nike said, just do it. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Leslie. This has been great. And I hope you come on the show again. And thank you so much for your time. My pleasure, Stacey. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too.